I just I'm before you in obedience to the Holy Spirit. I just wanted to um, share a bit of you know God's revelation to me. My whole intent this morning was to come to go up in prayer, but God has like kind of like directed me in a in a different path. Um, but what I want many of us to understand is that we have been created with purpose. We have been created with destiny in mind. And so for every giant that you will face, God wants you to show up because everything has already been planned. Everything has already been orchestrated. But um, I'm I'm gonna do a dance. This life may be a bit lengthy. I probably will do it in two parts. Um, but I'm gonna dance this morning um, because uh, it's where God's heart is for me. Um, you know, I want to minister to those who feel faint at heart, who feel that, you know, the, the giants are just there. They're faced with so many giants. And so do not be dismayed this morning. Do not count it all joy when you fall under testing and trials because God is there in the midst. He's there with you. And you just have to push past all the pain. You have to show up. You have to be pre present yourself. So um, I wanted to read. I wanted to read 1 Samuel chapter 9. And there are four key things that kind of came out of this chapter for me. So Saul is chosen as a king. So there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Becheroth. I'm going to turn this down a bit. The son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a choice and handsome son whose name was Saul. There was no more handsome person than he among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Now, the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son, Saul, Please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the mountains of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha, but they did not find them. Then they passed through the land of Sh Sh Shalim, and they were not there. Then they passed through the land of Benjamites, but they did not find them. When they had come to the land of Zoph, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come, let us return, lest my father cease caring about the donkeys and become worried about us. And he said to him, Look now, there is... There is in a city a man of God, and he is on he is an honorable man, and all that he says surely comes to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. Then Saul said to his servant, Saul said to his servant, But look, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread in our vessels is all gone, and there is no present to bring to, to the man of God. What do we have? And the servant answered Saul again and said, Look, I have here at hand one fourth of a shekel of silver. I will give that to the man of God to tell us our way. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, he spoke thus, Come, let us go to the seer for he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. 
Then Saul said to his servant, Well said, come, let's go. So they went to the city where the man was. And they went up the hill to the city. They met some young women going out to draw water and said to them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, Yes, he is. Just ahead of you. Hurry now. For today he came to this city because there is a sacrifice of people, of the people today on the high place. As soon as you come into the city, you will surely find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. For the people will not, will not um, eat until he comes because he must bless the sacrifice afterward those who who are invited will eat now therefore go up for about this time you will find him so they went up to the city and as they were coming into the city there was samuel coming out toward them on on his way up to the high place now the lord has told samuel in in his ear the day before saul came saying tomorrow about this time i will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people because their cry has come to me. And and it goes on, and I would encourage you guys to read um, the entire chapter, but I wanted to um, read this last part. It And then it said um, in ch verse... In verse 22, now Samuel took now Samuel took Saul, his servant, and brought them into the hall and had them sit in the place of honor among those who were invited. They, they, uh, sorry, there were about 30 persons, and Samuel said to the cook, bring the portion which I gave you, of which I said to you, set it apart. So the cook took up the the thigh with its upper part and set it before Saul and Samuel said here it is what what was kept back it was set apart for you and so in that reading I got two things one thing it was that Saul set out on uh, embarked on uh, not really an adventure because he wasn't going for um the the what you call it um like for the pleasure of of the journey he he was in search of that which was lost and you know and that applies to our lives today like we are in search of something that either something that we've been missing or something that we um we we are trying to find a connection or, or a revelation or an understanding of, you know, why is it we're here? What What is the purpose of us being here? And in whatever position you might be in, what, what purpose is that serving? And so we're on a journey to find something that will give our lives value, that will give our lives meaning. And so he was in search and basically didn't have a, a, a clear understanding of what direction to even begin to venture out into. He was just wandering in a place, searching for something that was meaningful to his family. And so a lot of times in, in the search for the direction, in the search for the path that God has for us, um, we have to be willing to take that step to embark on that journey. And I kind of titled this um, life uh, face, Facing Your Giants. Um, I don't recall the entire, uh, the entire title, but to face your giants. So the giant of not knowing what the end is, the giant of not knowing where it is exactly that you're being led to, but just making that willing choice to begin to set out on a journey so they set out him and his um the servant and so they they come to where like i would probably say a crossroad where 
okay they can't find what they're looking for and they're stuck between it's like okay we don't know where else to go what else to do and so they're at a crossroad a crossroad and now they ha they have a solution where you know they can either seek the prophet or seek the seer or seek whoever is called or positioned to give direction and so they had the understanding that in going to this person that will give them the direction um which they need to go they they needed to have a gift they needed to bring a sacrifice a sacrifice they needed to honor that individual and so the same with us it's like a lot of times free is not always good but you have to be willing to sacrifice that which you have for what that which you desire and so they they all that they had they were willing to give it to receive direction they were willing to give it to receive instructions on what to do and so it's like it this was this journey was already orchestrated and so we have to understand that our journeys are already orchestrated we know how it ends because we know that god is in the midst of that journey and so they they had the understanding that they they needed to give a gift they needed to give a sacrifice and in my reading i was wondering like when they came to the the high place like why all the details why they were telling them about you know that okay they are about to have a sacrifice um they are about to have um they are about to to sit down to eat and to have this um this this event where people were invited and so even in our destiny journey like number one we are in search of, of a direction we are in search of a path number two we are sent like the path we are on god is already orchestrated so understand that you are you are sent to whatever area whatever um land whatever the case might be you were sent there for a purpose and so there is the 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 act of being sent and then there's the act of of receiving um a, a reception so Saul did not even understand that the the journey he was on it was he was going to come to a place where he was going to reach a reception where Things have already been laid out for him. Things have already been set before him. Things have already been planned for him. And so he is going to this place not knowing what the end result might be, but he stays on course because he understands what the mission was, what the, the intent and the purpose of him when he first set out. And so a lot of times along the way, we lose track of what it is we initially set out to do what was that initial plan and so as we go forth understand to not get sidetracked to not lose track of what it is was that was placed the initial intent of of your walk the initial intent of the journey that you embarked upon because you made a choice and so he was sent because this was all the orchestration of a God that knew what his plans for him was. And then I read verse 22, number three, he was allowed to be seated in a place of honor. And it may not be, the place where you are sitting right now may not be honorable. It may not be a, a, a bed of roses. It may not be the like a garden of, of 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 beautiful flowers the serenity might be you know topsy-turvy things might be so off balance that you know you are at the point where you want to give up you want to throw in the towel but understand that where you're seated right now is not where is not your final position it's not your final position that there is a reception waiting for you there is food that is 
set before you to 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 replenish you so where you're seating is just a part of the process it's just a part of the journey that you have not yet reached the end of and so stay encouraged stay guarded stay don't lose heart that is what i would admonish do not lose heart because of where you're seated because personally i am seated in a place where i'm like okay god like how much more how much more of this can i take on but god is the helm he is your strength he is your source of help he is the present help in time of trouble and so we have to pull on god even when we are seated in the lowest places he is a god of the hills and he is a god of the valley so understand this morning that wherever it is that you are seated do not be silent do not uh lay waste and, and die there just get up get out of yourself and face that giant because that is what the enemy wants the enemy wants a lot of us to be slaughtered and lay slain by the wayside and to fall short of that which god has called us in to possess because understand that what god has placed in you is for for it's for a bigger it's for the bigger picture it's not just for you and your surroundings and, and your family it's it is bigger than that it is bigger it, it is a generation that is gonna come after you that is gonna benefit from all that you have going through that all that you've had to carry from all that you have had to endure it is for the posterity that is to come after you so stay seated in your place that God has called you into because understand even though it's not all that glitters and it's not the garden of roses or the bed of roses that you think that you should be I guess um experiencing right now understand that it is all gonna work for your good it is all going to, going to work for your good and I am speaking to myself because I'm seated in some places right now that I'm like, God, you are in control. Your authority will reign. Your authority will rule over everything that I'm walking into. And finally, this set before Paul, um, Saul, this set before Saul, the, the finest portion it was held for him it was already prepared and it was held for him because god knows where we end up we have to trust the process we have to trust god in the process and understand that it will work out it will work out for our good it will work out to our favorable end because it was set apart for him all that god has in store for you is already set apart it is already set before you it is just us having to make that decision to stand up and to face the giants because the enemy is constantly sending attacks because he has one mission one goal in mind to have you slaughtered and slain and fallen by the wayside and to abort abort your process and abort your destiny and abort your your purpose but god but god has you still standing here he is still breathing to you the breath of life for another day and so i encourage and i admonish that hold strong hold strong to the promises of God hold strong to every word that he has spoken over your life because where you are seated is not where you are staying where you're seated is not where you're staying because you are in search of your destiny and purpose you have been sent where we're going God has God has called us and so it's like he has equipped us with everything that we need to go forth and so why lay 
why lay waste at the at the at the side of the road why fall you know fall to the burdens that come upon us why stay seated in the low places just understand that god is the orchestrator of everything that comes into our path and so um i just wanted to share that and encourage someone um encourage someone this morning because there are giants that we're going to be faced with on a daily basis. Mountains that we feel that we cannot even trek over because we feel like we don't have the strength. But once we know who our God is and we know who we are in Christ Jesus, that our journey is orchestrated and we are being sent. We are being sent into the world. We are being sent into places that we uh, we don't even know, unfamiliar territories that we don't even know like what the outcome, but we know that this word that God has set before us, it is true. And it never, he, he never lies about his word. And so um, just remain seated, in those places that you know it it may not be glamorous it may not my god